Spirit o our meat no copyright it is for us Christians. We are born again. Joe Ev 3 has happened. But what has just happened to us Christians after? Read. Here for yourself maybe you will see where you are today. Many have forgotten what they themselves look like in the mirror of the Word of God. And what the mirror of the Word of God tells them to do by their emissary. Someone sees it but does nothing about it. He who still has a little hearing left. Here's what God says through the Spirit to the individual who is a member of the body, the Church of Jesus Christ. Revelation.3.22 God's peace to you who receive the life of the word that the Holy Spirit will give you. Read for yourself. 1 Corinthians 1.22 So what are people looking for right now? Wisdom like never before. Those we have proof of all things otherwise do not fit what you say, they think. They want to be smart so they know everything but often without grasping anything. People need to have a high education and some people think you should go to Bible school for so and so many years before you are trained to preach the gospel. Some people think we must be theologians before we even have to say a word from the Bible to others. It is very important we know how everything is connected so we can always prove everything by looking up in the Bible and showing them where it says. Here I think we find a lot of scribes who have a whole lot of knowledge, but are not always in the Spirit and have the Spirit of God in them. What are we? We are born with spirit soul and body, body. Genesis.2.21-22. And verse 29. We are spiritual souls and physical, carnal. Jobs Bog. 3.34. The Spirit is in us. Psalms. 51.12. The Spirit is within me and not what I can see within me. We are souls. The Song of Songs.5.6. High. 6.12. Everything we feel is in the soul. We call it is the life of the soul when we are souls and live in what we feel. 2. Tim. Letter. 2.27. We have a flesh in which we can live instead of the Spirit. God is. Holy Spirit. Father and Son. God is Spirit. Jesus became flesh. The Holy Spirit is life in us, spiritual life. We are saved by virtue of receiving grace and forgiveness through faith in the cross of Jesus Christ. We are born of a woman as human beings, as living souls or beings in the image of God. We are born again of God through the Holy Spirit. By confession, confession and cessation of our conscious sins. Some people are soulful, carnal the Bible calls them, living up and down in their emotions. As the wind blows depending on whether it is sunshine or cloudy on their life path, we are born again, become believing Christians. We are then newborn children longing for the unadulterated milk of the word. By the way, I think we all begin our Christian life in the flesh. In the emotions of our soul life where we begin running up and down, as if we were an elevator. 1. Peter.2.1 Crave for the spiritual unadulterated milk and not the substitute milk of the flesh which does not nourish. God's real food stays in you. The real one evaporates in step with your mood and your everyday life comes we grow up just as we see children born of earthly women do. We go from the milk over to a little more solid food we get baby puree in the beginning. Now we are also starting to be able to babble, as children do. We are often measured and weighed by God our Father because He will see if we grow, if we gain weight and are healthy and well. We are constantly weighed and sometimes we are found too light and need to have something more of either vitamins or proteins. Gradually we grow so much of what we now need to have solid food. And here we may well get stomach cramps in the beginning. The word of God may well be a little sharp diet for a delicate newborn stomach which first needs to digest it and get it metabolized in the body. 
Here I think it is quite important that we do not overfeed the new children so that they get constipated and do not benefit from the food. Heb. 5.14. We who are adult Christians, or should be, must make sure we do not go and fill the wrong food in the small children. It is life-threatening to give my children something they cannot tolerate. Adults can tolerate a good juicy steak with lots of onions on it. But try to give a child of about a year it. This is how we must constantly make sure we give the right nourishment to our siblings. It does not help that they do not get nourishment from what we say and do. Ephesians. Bridge 4.15. So we grow a growth, even if we are healthy children in Christ. We all start with breast milk. And here we do not tolerate substitute powder which can cause a bad stomach. We must grow up to male maturity where we can fully accommodate the fullness of Jesus Christ. Too many Christians are malnourished today or malnourished. They only get substitute milk to begin with and all their spiritual food soothes so to speak. Something that is mixed together by both the world, the Bible and philosophical knowledge which does not have much to do with the truth. Can one be born again and be carnal? There are spiritual, carnal, and spiritual Christians. We all begin in our flesh. This has nothing to do with us not being born again and being saved. Our name is inscribed in the book of life by God and we are under the blood of Jesus Christ it cannot be shaken. This is about what life we are in. You grow a growth through your life as a Christian here on earth. From being soul, Elig one had to grow over to be spiritual. Someone stays in the life of the soul of their flesh their whole life either because they are unaware that it is a spiritual life in the spirit to live or that they are basically well satisfied as long as they are saved. But, it is not God's intention we must remain on a spiritual and carnal level all our lives but, we must ascend to a higher level. We are going up in the spiritual life. We can also say we need to get out of ourselves, out of our own lives and be transferred into the spiritual life. The Hebrews. 4.12. The word of God is living and creating a somewhat double-edged sword. It is so sharp that it divides marrow and bone. It separates and divides us. It separates the flesh from the spirit. Not many Christians experience this. We all know we have inner life, but few have knowledge of the inner spiritual life with Jesus in his spirit. It is as if the word is not really allowed to completely share the flesh from the spirit as it is the meaning of the effect of the word in us. We have received everything in Jesus Christ. Why then does it not work as we see it should? 1. Col.3. 12-15 speaks clearly about what a spirit is like and what mind he has. So we have received, again an undeserved gift from God. By the grace of God by believing, the gift. The gift of the spirit has been given to us. Jesus has given us his own spirit. We all have Jesus Christ. Here I'm sure of one thing. People forget to ponder the word of the Lord day and night. They have forgotten that we must meditate on the Lord's law day and night. Not that it will be something we have to because. Otherwise we will be lost. We must not fall into slavery where we must be forced to do certain things. Otherwise we are out of the freedom of the kingdom of God again. So it is not a question of now that we must get together and learn the Bible by heart. Especially the verses we ourselves think are the most important. It becomes no more spiritual. We gain only a mental knowledge of the word of the Bible. We will still be equally carnal and spiritual unless God by his spirit is allowed to transform us from within and out. We are not to end up like the scribes and Pharisees we read about in the Bible. We have more than enough of them everywhere. It is not for nothing that Jesus says.
we must first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then we will get everything else all by itself. Many have become so accustomed to saying that verse, that they have not really seen the meaning of Jesus's word. We can ask where is God's kingdom now? The kingdom of God is brought to life in the word by the Holy Spirit, so that we ourselves can partake of the word as a life. May we ourselves be made alive by Jesus by his spirit and be one with Jesus in the spirit. It is not as long as you live in your own life, which is the flesh with all its passions and desires, nor as long as we allow the soul life to rule and rule in our lives. We probably sing so well otherwise. He is Lord, Jesus is Lord. But who or what is basically Lord and Regent in our lives? Ourselves, the flesh, the life of the soul. Who controls your life? Yes, one can be born again and still live in the life of one's flesh. In spite of that, it should be completely buried in the baptism of Jesus Christ. It is a choice we make and here it is about choosing right. We choose to live either in our own flesh with the soul life or in the life of God in the spirit with Jesus. Either in the new life of the spirit or in our old dead life. So, what should I do to become spiritual? It must be such that you know the double-edged sword in your life. Do you know this disintegration of your spirit and flesh? Then you also know the difference between spirit and your carnal soul life. But, do you also know how to be one with the word of God? It does not help you if you read the Bible and pray some prayers every day if you do not follow the word. You must be the doer of the word, and not the hearer of the word. Only the word of God can open your eyes and mind so that you both see and grasp. What is soul? flesh and spirit. So you can tell the difference between whether it is yourself, your flesh, your soul life, or the spirit of God that drives you to do what you do. Through the word you also see clearly what life you are living in. The word of God is the light of truth for you. It is God who enlightens the thoughts of your darkened mind so that you can clearly distinguish, it does by his spirit and he can only do it in one way. Namely, knowing that you yourself are spirit. God is spirit and he speaks through the Holy Spirit to spirit. And where the spirit of God is freedom. Not freedom to live as it suits us, but to complete service in the new life of the spirit. Unfortunately, that life is still to this day, as something new and unknown to many Christians. One sighs and prays for spirit revelation, spirit shedding, spirit renewal and searches for spiritual values. But forget one thing, it is in the life of the individual that the spirit must be active first before all that can happen. I.e. You must first be struck by the word that divides you internally so that your flesh and soul life are separated from the spirit. Like the grape. You must first be crushed before you can become spiritual. You must be crushed just as Jesus was crushed on the cross. You must first die before you can live. Here it may be a long time before this death process has taken place. You cannot earn yourself to die. Then you look like the Pharisees they understood to put them right. Put on masks in the different situations. You must ask Jesus to kill you on his cross. Ask him to take you not only to the cross, but up on it, so that you become one with the death of Jesus Christ. But just remember, it is you who must go the way of Jesus. It is you who must ask him for it. It is you who must volunteer. Just as Jesus ascended the cross and stays there. Ask for anything. Believe that you have received it and you will receive it. If you want a spiritual life, then get it too. But it costs you your whole life. If you want to die for Jesus together. You have to pay with your life we've got a helper. We know we have received the Holy Ghost as a pledge of our eternal life. When we came to believe in Jesus Christ, his spirit also got in us. 
Johannes Ev. 14.26. But the spokesman, the Holy Ghost, will remind you of all that I, Jesus, have said to you. He can only do this if we are one in the Spirit with him. The Holy Spirit is also mentioned as the Comforter in older translations. This is exactly what we need when we experience that we are not at all as spiritual as we basically went and thought we were. Jesus guides us precisely by his comfort, admonition, and rebuke in his right ways so that we do not get lost in the ways and will of our own carnal thoughts. I think it is so good that we also have a comforter in Jesus, otherwise everything he says to us would seem like judgment and condemnation over us. In order to be spiritual instead of carnal, it is very important that we are made alive by God himself through Jesus. Otherwise, it is only a life with religious tendencies we live in the life of our flesh, which is also called the life of Adam, the nature of life we all inherited from our ancestor Adam. But for all of us who are born again, this verse applies. We are brought to life once for all Kolos. Letter 2.13 but we can easily be cheated or deceived by the nature of our flesh, which so wants to save itself by showing how good and pious one is. So, if you are not awake, you can be deceived so that you end up in the life of your own flesh. And that in spite of one's name is inscribed in the book of life. Is it really that bad? Am I really like that? Yes we are all like that in ourselves. And before we realize that this is the way it is with us, we never take a single step forward on the way home or into the journey of the life of God from the life of our dead flesh, into the living life of the Spirit. As it also says in Peter's letter if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just so he forgives us all our sins and Jesus's son's blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. One of the greatest injustices is, the lie of self-righteousness. Many people live in a great self-deception, where when you hear what they say and see what they do and live in, you have to say. Their lives do not agree at all with their words. They say one thing and live something completely different. They are almost insane. It is usually the people who walk around and tell everyone how spiritual they are, how much they do for Jesus and yet you do not see a single sign that follows those who believe. They are what Paul means. Who inflated and live in the deceitfulness of their flesh religiosity. We actually have to be a little careful about which of those who bear the name Christians you are with. You can easily be deceived and come to live in a religious slavery that has nothing to do with the life of a spirit of Jesus. We are affected by the words that are said and the spirit that is in man. This also applies to the religious spirit that does not live in the life of the Holy Spirit. Many false prophets and teachers must stand up and try to lead us all astray. They say come here. We have the truth. We have the real thing. We have Jesus as he is. Just join us. It is all the others who are the unclean. Only we are the pure therefore we are not so many. In that regard, one must say, they live in the deception of their flesh and do not know the true life of the Spirit in Jesus. They know nothing to be one with Jesus, both in his death, resurrection and living life. They have died in the lie of their own thoughts which come from the deception of the flesh which in turn originates from the nature of Adam who must have been dead and buried in the baptism with the Lord Jesus. Something came in. Now look right here what is written in Romans to those who want to follow Jesus. Rom.5.12 Sin came into the world through a human being. Just so. Yes it is on purpose I do not write the verses in full. I want you to learn to look up the word of God to yourself and read it. So that by self-examination and reception in faith, you can learn to eat yourself. You will not keep getting it served as baby food.
You also got into something yourself when you received Jesus. Many Christians are not aware they entered a spiritual life when they received salvation from perdition by faith in Jesus. They are content to have their name inscribed in the Book of Life, be saved, and then otherwise go to meetings, do some practical work in the congregation, church, and then otherwise try to be as Christian as possible by being polite, having a high morals, and try as best they can now to live by what the Bible says, of course under the conditions that the present modern world offers them to live in and under. In addition, I have to ask, is it to be driven by a NDEN and live in it? In that case, what kind of spirit are they in and driven by? Judge for yourself what spirit you are of by looking at how you basically live. It is not what you think you are and do we aim for, but whether you are in the spirit of Jesus or in the spirit of your own flesh, the spirit of old Adam. No matter what you try to hide from you. You will never be anything other than exactly what God's word says you are. When you hold it word up in front of you looks deep, long into the word mirror you see who you are. Did you spot your own situation? What are you? Whether you have now opened your eyes to the fact that you have actually been deceived and have become carnal again. May you again go to Jesus and ask him to cleanse you again in his blood. You can not, by redoing, improving yourself, taking yourself together have a spiritual life. Job 14.4 Can a clean thing come out of an unclean thing? Mark 7.21-23 It is from within you that all impurity comes. Also that you may not live in the life of the Spirit and let it rule instead of the will of your own flesh. But be aware. It's not your fault as a whole. It is Adam's nature in you, your flesh. That may have deceived you. Romans chapter 8 applies. You think this is death sentence and perdition over you and you life. No. It is the truths that judge the things in your life God does not want to be there that prevent you in the free life of God in the life of the Holy Spirit. Jesus does not condemn and accuse you if you have discovered the deception of your flesh and have converted to the life of the Spirit in Jesus. Search yourself which is a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. We must all see if we are on the path of the pain of the flesh, or if our flesh still reigns and imagines we are so spiritual. It is extremely important that we do not allow ourselves to be deceived. Amen.